All right, YouTube, it's a new day, a new rainfall, and uh, it's time to do another jet ski video. I have, since the last video, glued on the hood seal, so hopefully it uh, doesn't take on as much water as quickly anymore. I would really like to continue and finish up the surf brace, but I need to take the carburetor off this, I think, first and see what's going on in there. These aren't the easiest things to work on in some ways, but uh, fortunately, one of the things that's very easy to do on them is to remove the carburetors, especially with a single carb. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a second and pop that off. Normally, I would wear gloves, but... Uh, there's a bit of a glove shortage due to this whole pandemic. I think I might actually run out to the truck before I start taking the carburetor apart itself and get myself a couple pairs of gloves to use. This ends up being very convenient because you don't even need to take the uh, throttle cable off. It stays with the uh, plate and all you do is detach it from there. And your carburetor is almost off already. I just need to pull some fuel lines off. Before I pull some fuel lines off, I am going to get myself a pair of gloves. Don't want to sp spray gasoline all in my face and eyes, so take this off slowly. There we go. And our carburetor is off, just like that. Let's go to the bench. There is a little bit of conspicuous fuel around here, which means that uh, we could have some leakage issue. This diaphragm seems okay. It doesn't seem nasty in here, that's for sure. I've seen a whole lot worse. Try to keep stuff as clean as possible, so if there's dirt in here, I know it was already in there. I was kind of suspecting that the poppet pressure, or that this, uh, valve was going to be the problem perhaps it was leaking by but it looks to be in really good shape oh yeah now if any of these jets were plugged it would be running lean and it seems to be doing the opposite of that, but I'm still going to pull them out uh, and have a look, see what's going on. At the same time, I should be able to document what size the jets are. I have no idea. I've never taken this apart. I actually haven't worked on very many key in curbs ever. I was actually a Makuni guy. All the Yamaha stuff had Makunis and the Suzuki that I had had a Makuni. This is a 140, looks like a 140 main jet. I'm assuming it's the main jet. It looks to be the bigger of the two. And the pilot is a 80. All right, I'm gonna pop this part off now. Oh, it's gonna come off. little bit of crud here on the internal filter but nothing serious so far it's looking exceptionally good for how long it's set so the only thing I can see perhaps would be if this o-ring was leaking which is a possibility because there was some fuel around here as I said earlier fuel comes in through here through the poppet valve and fills this and then goes in through the high and low speed jets. But if this O-ring is leaking, 
and this o-ring I guess so kind of seems unlikely but it's a possibility that fuel was bypassing and just going into the uh, high and low speed circuit I think the last pumper type curb I worked on was probably an old Tillotson on a 1970s or 80s snowmobiles let's pull the screws out and see if there's any damage on the tips of the screws or if the uh, o-rings are completely shot the screw looks okay the o-ring looks okay all right got this little thing off whatever the heck that is and that would be the passage directly through to the venturi comes through the poppet fills this chamber and then goes through the main and pilot so what uh, what they're doing is basically they have fuel coming in through the poppet it fills up this chamber and then you've got your high and low speed jet it goes through the high speed jet here and directly into the venturi through this hole you can actually see the screwdriver through there and then to compensate for leaning or richening leaning or enrichening we also have fuel going in through here so there's a secondary passage over here that is not jetted fuel goes into this chamber which goes to the back side of the high speed screw which lets more fuel into this chamber all right, so so far inside of here, it looks really good. I don't see anything that would cause a problem. That is both good and bad news. It's good news because it's an old carburetor and it's still working. Bad news because if I don't find anything that's wrong, then uh, it wasn't part of my problem. I'm going to pull the pump side apart take a look in it. I expect it to be just as good as the other side, but uh, I'll take it apart anyway. I don't think I need to even go into here. It looks so good. I think what I'll probably do is uh, order a rebuild kit for it just because it's old and some of the o-rings are starting to dry out a little bit. But. All right, I don't see any obvious issues with this. It uh, seems as though it should be working fine, but I'm gonna order a rebuild kit for it anyway because all it would take is for this O-ring to uh, be seeping a little bit or leaking, and it's quite old, so that's possible. Needle valve or poppet valve is still pliable. I don't actually have a poppet valve tester, so uh, it might actually be bypassing a little bit and that's all it would take to cause it to run rich. So. <clears throat> Taking a look at the back of this uh, check valve plate or whatever it's called there is a bit of corrosion or schmoo on it. I honestly don't know what's more annoying, my GoPro or my cat. If there's any positive pressure for any reason inside of the Venturi, most likely because of a backfire, this passage is open to the Venturi. So if you had a backfire through the carburetor, it would pressurize this and if this was just left completely open then that pressure would come back in and actually feed into the diaphragm it could rupture a diaphragm or yeah could do some nasty stuff so basically what they do is they put a little check valve in there and any pressure that tries to come back through would close that check valve and the pressure would just uh, remain the same inside of this chamber 
It's probably not necessary that I clean this up at all, but I'm going to do it because I have it apart, so why not? Alright, I got the surface of that all cleaned up, even though it's just a safety device. Put these two screws in to hold it in place. A whole bunch more things nobody needed to know. How does the fuel get to the low speed? Oh, some of it just dumps right through. This seems to be a very strange setup. They're just dumping it into there. And then this is like a secondary. Uh-huh. Wow. Seems a bit archaic to me. <laughs> just bobbles around. Archaic, I tell you. That's interesting. This passage, this area then, should be void of fuel. When I opened my carburetor up, this area had a whole bunch of fuel in it. But it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be sealed off. So that kind of indicates that these are leaking that this o-ring rather is leaking and perhaps this one as well basically in order for fuel to get into this chamber it either has to leak through around where the fuel comes in so around here or it has to go through the jets but instead of going into the engine it basically is leaking out around this o-ring into this chamber seems more likely that it would leak through here pain in the butt cat Yeah, it's seriously really difficult to get anything done with a cat. I wish I had a poppet tester. I could probably come up with something, but... Tighten this down really good. Maybe that'll help seal everything up. Although that's usually not the case with O-rings. Pop it back together like... Right, so that's a basic inspection of a Kian CDK2.